Hello, good morning. Good morning. How do I sound? Do I sound okay? Yes, very well. Thank you for joining us uh, this early, Dave. I'm sure I'm up at five, so it's no big deal. This is WZRD Chicago 88.3 FM. We have with us on WZRD via Zoom, Dave Football, jazz artist and um, Chicago uh, jazz artist too, right? You're, you're, yep, just, uh, yes, because we see you playing all over. And uh, he's joining us um, to talk about uh, his album, Bow Tunes, and about his art. Hi, Dave, how are you today? I'm pretty good, how are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Well, uh, your most uh, recent re-release of your album, uh, uh, your 2011 album about the uh, Tao Tunes. Um, we've been playing uh, off and on. And uh, so what inspired you to use the Tao Te Ching for an album? Um, ever since I was like 14 or so, I, I used to watch the, the TV show Kung Fu. <laughs> and um, they had these sages on there that would say all these wise things. And I realized that they were actually reading parts of the Tao Te Ching because when I went to college I really got into uh, the, Tao, the Tao and I had this one translation I liked and but it, it really uh, is an important uh, text for me I kind of it's a kind of a central thing for how I live my life I guess so I you know I really wanted to I, I thought you know I'd l like to take that and and work with it. Do you um, still remember which translation that was and did you use that translation for uh, your material, your lyrics in uh, Tao Tunes? I do. It was Jane English's translation, but it was, uh, I, I think at first I tried to see if I get permission to use it and I, it didn't work out. So then uh, what I did is I spent, I, it's one of your questions is uh, what I did first. And I wrote the lyrics first. I, I, I got like four public domain um, uh, translations. And then I went through them and tried to piece them together. So that in, into something that I liked. Uh, and tried to make them into lyrics, which are different than just a text. Mm -hmm. So how long did you work on these lyrics before you had enough uh, material for your album? Uh, like over a year. <laughs> it took a long time. Mm -hmm. Do you still remember what, uh, which, uh, which track was your first, uh, was your first track and which one is your favorite track? Oh, I, um, well, I'm not sure which one my first track was. But um, I think my favorite track, th there's a lot of different moods and different um, grooves and stuff on this thing, but um, Sick is a song that I did that I, um, as a composer, I love counterpoint because I love Bach. And I, I've always wanted to do counterpoint with different scales, like, you know, non-Western scales. And I uh, wrote Sick. And at, first of all, we did it as a free jazz thing. And then we, I came back and I rearranged it and it had all this neat counterpoint in it. Um, so I like that tune, but I actually, it's a kind of a long answer because as far as fun tunes, I like useful as mm -hmm. far as ballads, I like worthy. Um, as far as things that are out, I like paradox because it's kind of crazy and fun. And, and if hipster kind of a song, I like stop. It's kind of like a more jazzy kind of cool jazz tune. And even we have a kind of an avant-garde one called spirit, which, uh, is, was pieced together kind of um, like a collage. It's real spacey. Dan Hessler decided to read from the book Black Beauty. Um, he found in this recording studio and he read it and then we put his voice in the background and you can't tell what he's saying, but it's kind of like weird and avant-garde and, and it, it was kind of fun. So that's a fun one too, Spirit. Mm. Did you, uh, did Tao tunes derive from any Chinese music? No, that's actually, I don't think so. I, um, I, I was mainly just working with the text and, you know, I, I've done things in the past that had Asian influences with my global jazz stuff, but no, I didn't really, I don't think any of the pieces really um, went and used that. Mm. We, uh, you uh, sing all the songs. Uh, have you had any voice training before? Yeah, I had voice training in my undergraduate school where I kind of minored in voice a little bit. I had some voice lessons. And then 
I had some really, I had some other voice lessons throughout my life, but I didn't, you know, I'm not super trained. I mean, I, I, I still sing now. I, I think I'm, I'm kind of like a self-made singer, but uh, uh, Julie Crossan is a really good singer that was my teacher at that time. And she was um, uh, tutoring me on it and actually came to the sessions and helped me warm up and, and help me, you know, get the best out of my voice during the sessions. Mm. And uh, where did uh, your undergraduate studies at where? <laughs> at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Oh. <laughs> which is in a little town called Indiana, Pennsylvania. See, I'm from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And so that was a closed place for me to go. But actually I went there and I um, found two amazing teachers and one of them became my mentor, um, Nicolo Sartori, uh, this piano, piano teacher mm -hmm. and a really good composer, Daniel Prolongo. And they, that's what got me into all this and into composing. Um, and I eventually, you know, went to Eastman School for my master's and University of Michigan for my doctorate in composition. Mm. How was uh, Dalton's received when you released it in 2011? Well, that's the tragic story. I, I, it was just, uh, I, I released it myself. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who to send it to. I did get some really nice reviews. I got a review from Neil Tesser and some other reviews. I got a review in, over in uh, Italy. Uh, and, and also in Scotland, I got a nice review, but as far as airplay, it was hardly any airplay because I didn't know what I was doing. So when I released dedications, um, last year, or this year, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it was this year, actually. Uh, you know, it was going really well. I'm using Kate Smith, uh, productions and she's getting it all over the, all over the country and uh, all over the world. And so I thought, boy, maybe I could could add this into what I'm doing and kind of put the two of them together and 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 finally get get it out there so people could hear it because it's it's a really important um, it's an important CD to me it's kind of you know it's central to what I want to give the world I want to I want to share this with people and um, and expose them to it and help them appreciate it. When you got those reviews uh, in Scotland and uh, and what what was the other uh, country? In Italy. Italy, yes. How how did the reviewers get a copy of your uh, of your track? Did you send it? Was it by word of mouth? What happened? I think I I don't know if I, I don't remember. <laughs> it was ten years ago. Um, I I think I I think I'm I don't I don't know the guy in Scotland. I'm not sure how I did that. I I have Scottish in my in my ancestry. I don't. He actually found out that I'm mostly Scottish for my names. Um, and that one was all about jazz, which is, I think I sent it to all about jazz in general. And mm -hmm. this person maybe found it um, in Italy and wrote a nice review about it. So, um, at, so at that point, there wasn't any uh, great reach uh, for the album. Yeah, it was, it was, there was some reviews about it, but mm -hmm. it wasn't getting played and wasn't getting discussed or wasn't, nobody knew it was out there really. So it was mm -hmm. kind of sad. It was kind of a, a bummer. Well, we're glad that uh, you released it now because uh, we play it all the time and we uh, use it to accompany the news and it uh, uh, fits very well with a lot of the news stories that we do. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Your, your station is, is great. You started training in piano when you were four years old. So what inspired you to jazz? Um, well, when I, I started piano because I played by ear, you know, I was playing Budweiser commercials when I was four and, and double mint spearmint gum. And so that's why my parents said, oh, we should give them piano lessons. Um, but I was classically trained the whole time. So, you know, I, all the way through my doctorate, I did classical music. And but on the side, I did, you know, when I was young, I did Billy Joel songs and then I did jazz and I just did jazz by ear uh, without really understanding it very much or understanding the theory. Uh, but it was always there. And as I, as I did my doctorate in composition, I kind of realized like I, I started mixing jazz elements into my composition, uh, compositions. And I realized I'd rather kind of, it gave me more, I don't know, it, it seemed more natural to me or more my own voice to compose as a, in, in the jazz world than in, in the concert world. Um, so in fact, you asked about third, third stream and, and one of your questions you asked me uh, that, that the, um, the Ethos Chamber Orchestra uh, did this third stream kind of uh, music, which is kind of a mix of classical music and improvising, and even had some jazz stuff in there. 
And so I, that when I first got here, I was kind of searching what to do and studying jazz for the first time because um, I really hadn't studied real jazz and theory. And I was with the Ethos Chamber Orchestra and that was kind of a neat bridge to, uh, um, to get into jazz and improvising uh, while still doing classical music. And then uh, I actually wrote them, wrote two pieces with them and they performed them. So that was really kind of cool. What do you mean by improvising? So while you're playing, you also improvise? So it doesn't like follow the composition closely? Is that what you mean? That means um, in, th in third, string, third string music, the, there's areas of improvisation for certain instruments. So mm -hmm. it'll be in the score. It'll say, you know, cello, 12 measures improvise while the rest of the orchestra keeps going. Or... Or it could actually turn into a jazz thing where you know that there's just chords and 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 only certain people play that and they improvise, but it's kind of written into the score in different ways. Sometimes there's a lot of it, sometimes there's just a little bit. Could you explain a little bit more to the audience about third stream? Third stream, yeah. Well, um, I mean, I I just dabbled in it for a little bit, um, but it, it's 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 um, the idea of having an orchestra or having a, a group of musicians that are kind of classically trained and, and rooted in a classical orchestra concert music, but they're mixing in um, other elements into the to music. You know, jazz is one. Um, so there you might hear jazz kind of jazz chords in there. World music might get mixed in or more avant garde stuff where it's kind of free. Um, and they try to mix that into the classical format. So you have some some points in the music where some of the people are improvising um, and they're making so it's, you know adding improvisation into a classical concert uh, format well it kind of uh, seems very uh, in line with what you're doing especially what what you're doing in uh, Dow Tunes. so how how did the connection come about between you and the Ethos uh, uh, chamber that's another thing I don't remember. That's, that was in 1980, 1987, you know. Um, I don't know how I found out about them, but, uh, you know, maybe a musician I knew uh, was playing with them and asked me, and they said they needed a piano player for a piece, and I, and I did the piano for a couple pieces, a couple concerts. I was only with them for a couple years. Mm -hmm. um, but I did write uh, this one piece, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, and, and it had a jazz tune in it called Walking Sideways that I got them to play. Um, and that was actually the, the beginning of me doing, deciding, hey, I'm going to go do my own jazz ensemble and write my own music, you know, with a, like a traditional jazz quartet or a quintet. And uh, that's when I kind of, you know, stopped working with them and formed my own group. Mm -hmm. Walking Sideways, that's uh, interesting. Did you come up with that title? Yeah, I like to make up titles. That, that was... Uh, and, and I actually wrote words to it about like ducks walking around or and they're goofy words. So I never really sing them, but it, it, it's a, cause in, in jazz, there's a walking bass that goes boom, boom, bam, boom. And this, this song keeps shifting. So it feels like you're kind of moving sideways. Mm. So was it, um, uh, so what, what did it sound like with an orchestra and, uh, and this, uh, this kind of jazz? Well, some of the pieces I wrote were more like a, like a string quartet kind of thing that I expanded, which was, it sounded more classical, it was a real moody, like I think it was one called Twisted Branches or Swirling Twisted Branches. It was like looking up at a tree at night. You know, I think the piece was called A Walk in the Park. So I, you know, one was about looking at these trees, one was about walking sideways. I forget mm -hmm. what the other ones were, um, but some of them were orchestral, but then some of them just broke down and turned into like a little jazz group you know, with maybe the orchestra playing a couple, uh, other other people playing a couple sounds. Mm. Well, did you, um, uh, did anybody in that orchestra uh, work with you later? Because it seemed as if uh, you were working very well together in, uh, in uh, bringing different, um, different concepts together. Yeah, um, not really. Um, I, I got to know some people there, but no, I, uh, my, mainly I, when I went out and started my own group, I, went to some jam sessions actually I went to the bop shop which is where Kate Smith used to own this jazz club called the bop shop way back then and Kate Smith is who I'm working with now to promote my CD she made this company but I went to this and they had this really cool jam session and I actually saw met two of my musicians I've worked with forever Dan Hessler 
I saw him playing saxophone and he was like amazing. He's like up on stage with his eyes closed, like, you know, improvising. And R.S. Biscus was playing percussion and, and, and drums and he was really good too. Well, speaking of eyes closed, I, we see when you playing the, um, the keyboard piano, your, uh, your, you know, your whole body is, uh, is uh, just uh, like one with the piano. So could you play the piano with your eyes closed? Sure. You mean right now? Oh no. Well, when you're <laughs> <laughs> when you're performing. Yeah, I mean, I think pianists um, learn to feel the distance, and they learn to feel the piano kind of like Braille because it has these black keys and white keys. You can you can ga gauge the distance and understand how chords feel on the, the keys. So yeah, you, I can play with my eyes closed. And mm -hmm. I actually was at a gig for a wedding, and the, they lost the power, and there was no lights in the room. And uh, the whole band, uh, there was a trio, jazz trio. We just kept playing. We oh. just called tunes and played in the dark, which was kind of fun. Yes. Well, I'm uh, sure your uh, audience will remember that forever. <laughs> well, there's blind pianists too, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, Art Tatum was blind and Ray Charles, you know about right. him and Stevie right. Wonder. I mean, those pianists, are, they're able to feel the distance and feel the keys with their mm -hmm. eyes closed. Mm -hmm. Please share with us uh, some of your work in ethnic, ethnic music. Oh, yeah. Well, that was the first thing. I, when I first got here, I decided to, have, I had this kind of mission to see if I could blend um, ethnic music or world music with jazz. And I can take elements from both of them. And that, that the first two albums I did, um, Tendrils of Light and Ganesh, are original compositions that, um, that used all those. Um, and the, the idea was to like, you know, it, it was the idea of, you, you know, um, showing the unity of humanity, you know, showing that everybody is like connected and, and just, and uh, just pulling them all like the spokes of a wheel that everything, if you mix it with jazz, you'll see that there's, a, there's this connectedness between the different uh, cultures and stuff. Um, but uh, what did I want to show you? I, I, I could... Well, for instance, I wrote a, a piece called Tendrils of Light that was kind of had an, a, a drone and kind of had an Indian kind of a, a raga scale to it. And I had a lot of tunes that had, I studied Indian music with uh, this man. And I so I wrote them in raga, uh, Ganesh, um, the Battle of Shiva and Ganesh, uh, Kuali. So those were kind of pieces that were kind of from that area. And then um, we I had... Uh, uh, Zimbabalupi <laughs> is a title I made up, which is had a kind of an African feel to it. I was trying to get my CD up so I could see the names on it. Uh, here it is. Uh, let's see what other ones I got on here. Uh, Buddha Siesta was kind of a mix of um, Buddha again back then, you know, kind of a, a Japanese kind of a, a, a melody. And siesta was like kind of a Latin thing. So it was a mixing of Latin and, and Asian melodies. Um, and antelope was another one that was kind of Af African. It was it was getting written like the sound like an antelope running around. Mm -hmm. oh. Arabic was kind of supposed to be Middle Eastern. Um, so each each piece I tried to like you know like st study the world music, think about it, and then pick certain elements from that, and then mix certain elements with jazz and come up with a piece. Yeah, you just mentioned uh, Spokes of the Wheel. I'm pretty sure that uh, in Dao Tunes, uh, one of your songs had that um, had Spokes of the Wheel in it. You're As right, yeah, useful. Useful. Um, spoke, there's 30 spokes on the hub of a wheel, but it's the hole in the middle that is useful. Right. Yeah, so that whole song is really cool because it's about how th the stuff that's useful is usually empty. You know, mm -hmm. like a bowl, the thing that's useful about a bowl is the space in the bowl. The bowl is, itself isn't useful. So that's kind of a fun song. That's one of the, that's kind of a, a fun song that makes you think a little bit and makes you realize sometimes things that, like nothingness can be just as important as somethingness. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so that's very true with that song. As a matter of fact, uh, when uh, when we listen to uh, um, uh, the all 17 tracks, they're there's a lot of uh, insight in, in all of them too. Well, thanks. That was um, that was really it was like um, tiptoeing through a, a dangerous. I mean, it was like a, a, you know it was really tricky to try to keep the, the the integrity of the text 
uh, while you're still changing them a little bit because with lyrics you need to have like a some sometimes you need a rhythm that works for you you know and on a couple of tunes like paradox i wrote additional lyrics that that kind of were a, a, additional examples because in um in 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 the Tao Te Ching, you get these examples that that tell you about uh, it, you know, they give you an a, a idea of what is going on. Let me see if I can find it here. Paradox, there it is. Lyrics. Um, so that which that which shrinks must first be full. That which fails must first be sturdy. And sometimes I would add other ones um, or or stretch out an idea and make it into eight lines instead of two lines. Kind of extrapolate the take the idea and, and, and say it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, were there any uh, any tracks that you um, did not use that, that you, you that you did um, create but um, did not uh, include on the album? Yes, there is one, and I, I have it. I can even send it to you if you want me to just have the the MP3. It's called Virtue. It's kind of a nice one, um, and. Uh, it's it's actually perfect for our our time because it's uh you know it's it's about finding virtue in in the home nurture virtue in the town and the country and the planet and the universe trying to you know let it expand you know mm -hmm. uh, which is you know the idea of you know doing something having behavior that catches on and in and helps the world to get more peaceful and more um, you know thoughtful. Um, yeah, there, that's the only one that didn't didn't get on. Why didn't it get on? It didn't fit. <laughs> oh, well, maybe there'll be um, uh, Dao Tunes too then in the future. Um, possibly. This was a big big project. I mean, I maybe I, I've, off, I've often thought about taking other kind of spiritual text and, and maybe a co collection. I started doing that at one point and I'm looking for Islamic uh, poems or looking for uh, Native American text and, you know, trying to maybe do one of each of them or one or two of each. Um, but I had never, I never really continued that too much. Well, we hope that you do go for it. It will be so interesting because the uh, Dao Tunes we really, really enjoy. Um, so um, let's say, um, do you still remember Virtues? Do you, are you at a piano now? Are you able to perform anything for us? If you still remember Virtues, maybe since it's not on the album, maybe you could perform it for us if, if you have it. Wow, I'd have to go find the music. Um, um, no, I don't. Um, I mean, I could go get, I could get a tune off. Of my, my book is right here. Sure. Um, let me see what I got here. Yes, it is, uh, it is very interesting. We, uh, there, you have 17 tracks and then um, it seems as if uh, uh, every time uh, we listen to uh, a track, we find something new. Yeah, I, I just thought I just I can just play something I found. I, I have I found okay. distractions. Distractions? Um, okay. Yeah, I thought I I could play sure. just maybe just play the beginning of it. Sure. Just hear the head. I mean, I'll, I'll try to sing the words. I got my mic here. Okay. Uh, and this is a uh, it, it's it's a this is a tune that's in like a six eight you know kind of a six eight feels that too loud. Is that okay? It's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, and, and it's in three, kind of, it's in three. And then in the bridge, it goes into four and it talks about the sages, how the sages do things, you know, compared to people that are distracted in their life and, and it messes them up. So again, this is like, these are little lessons. So here we go. He who stands on tiptoe is not steady. And she who hurries can't keep up the pace. He who seeks a spotlight dims his brilliance. She who is self-righteous wins disgrace. Nothing is achieved by endless boasting. Endurance is not gained by one who's vain. Self-importance brings about disaster. And grabbing lots of cash can get you slain. According to the travelers on the pathway of the heart. Pursuing these distractions yields no good. For some, none of these ambitions can true happiness impart. So avoiding them unceasingly is undeniably understood. 
beautiful well thanks i couldn't see it so i was playing some of the wrong chords because my head is in front of the light so i wasn't really <laughs> really set up to do that but it gave, it gave me the idea yeah it sounded it sounded really really good do you still remember how many chapters of the Tao Te Ching did you uh, use are there many more chapters left oh i actually have um i have that one of the translations in front of me there's 81 chapters mm. so i only used you know 18 so i you know i picked what I did is I pick ones that some of them are really long and I didn't didn't know how I was going to make you know use those for lyrics and sometimes the the uh, the subject matter didn't appeal to me mm -hmm. you know um, some of them had images in them that that I thought would be fun to try to paint in music you know like uh, and so that's you know that's kind of what went into it a little bit mm. so that's how you kind of think um, uh, music is sound but uh, in your mind you're painting so yeah, I mean, there's a thing called word painting. Um, it, it's, it goes all the way back to uh, the, the Middle Ages, where you, you have a song. If you have a word like crying, you might go da da, and like the, like a tear coming down. Or if you have the word ascending, you might be going da 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 and climb upward. So, um, so sometimes in uh, in the text, you know, I'll see words in there, or, or even just an image, and and then and I'll try to create it in music. Which is really common. It's not. It's not something I came up with. It's people. Musicians have been doing that forever. Like if you know the song, "I Got Friends in Low Places." You ever hear that song? Yes. <laughs> the word <laughs> "low" is really low. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of funny. Wow. This is WZRD Chicago eighty-eight point three FM, and we have with us on Wizard via Zoom, Dave Flippo jazz artist, uh, pianist, uh, vocalist. Well, Dave, uh, uh, let's uh, do a community uh, wizard, community assessment with you. We, uh, um, WZRD Chicago, being a nonprofit radio station, must be responsible to the community we serve. WZRD is mandated to file quarterly issues with the FCC on non-entertainment community-focused programming. So we like to assess the community for these quarterly issue topics with three questions. First, what is most important to you? Um, I like the, uh, um, I, I, the idea of having freedom and hearing pieces that um, are diverse um, and that, that and the idea of playing pieces that are long that need time to, um, play so much so much commercial media radio is three or four minutes long and then if it isn't that long then you don't play it so i appreciate mm -hmm. that uh, on the station you'll, you'll play my piece metamorphosis which is 10 minutes long you know mm -hmm. yes well um so uh let's uh, let's just uh, sidetrack a little bit how how did um how did metamorphosis come about uh what inspired you to uh, metamorphosis that's yeah, quite a why story. was it so long? Oh well, that's that's on dedications, and that and now mm -hmm. I, I wrote all these. I wrote a bunch of pieces for the people in my band, and this was written for Heath Chapel, the drummer. And I I go to the people, I go to the players, and I say, I want to write a piece for you. What would you like in the piece? And he said, Well, I'd really like to be in, in a different time and a different tempo than the rest of the band. Like mm -hmm. for, you know, be free. I want to just do whatever I want and any not really match up with you very much, you know. So I wrote that piece quite, uh, quite a while ago, and um, it, it ended up uh, having a, it had a big story to it where it was like, he was this wild, impetuous youth playing this crazy music. And then he, uh, uh, he met these sages again, sages, you know, doing this kind of like a motet kind of a kind of a chant that had that it had counterpoint, which I like again. It was like four voice counterpoint, kind of like a motet or something. And then in the story, he takes off and goes really fast and the stages all speed up with him and they try to talk to him while he's running really fast in his drumming. And then they, they basically slow, they talk with him, they go back and forth, the band, the, you know, the soloist and the drummer, they take what's called trading fours or trading eights. And then it slows down, uh, you know, they calm down a little bit and finally they get to play the whole chant for him. 
which is uh, at the end, it's kind of more mellow. And but he's still in his own time. He's like, he's kind of like a little kid that's running around in the room at the, the wedding, you know, where everybody else is sitting down at the tables. He's still um, kind of free. Uh, he's free a lot of the album. Um, and then we have a free improv at the, at the end. And then we just, and then the song kind of ends. But it's this whole story, you know, and that's that's why it took so long because it's and it was a process. It's supposed to be a process of someone young and and kind of like lost a little bit and kind of kind of crazy meeting people, talking to them and like being changed, you know, and being welcomed, uh, becoming friended by them, I befriended by them, I guess, and calming down and, and kind of centering themselves a little bit. So it takes a while to do that. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a lifetime. Yeah, and uh, just um, uh, uh, to let our listeners know, there aren't any lyrics uh, in the Metamorphosis. It's all music. So all that you've described for us uh, is portrayed in the music. Yeah, that's. Um, it, I, I don't even know if I write that in the album, but that that's, you know, some pieces have a whole story behind it. Sometimes mm -hmm. that when I write a piece, it's got this whole story and that's how I build it, build mm -hmm. the, the piece. It seems like um, uh, you're portraying two dimensions in the metamorphosis in one song. Yeah, it yeah, like, like yeah. Um, it, uh, yeah, the youth and then the sages, is that what you mean? The two characters? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Nice. Okay. Second question um, for our community assessment is: What long-term problem must we address? I don't. I don't really know if I have an answer for that. When um, um, I, I uh, when I look at the schedule, sometimes it, it uh, sometimes it would be nice to know uh, maybe have more uh, areas that have a defined purpose or something, you know like a like a topic. So that if I know I want to hear something about spiritual things, I'd come in on this show. Or if I wanted to hear something about uh, exp experiment, uh, experimental, I don't know. I mean, but the, the whole idea of the station is that it's so free. Um, but I, I don't know. Um, I, um, oh, long term problem. It's a, it's a, um, uh like in your life, not not with wizard. Oh, <laughs> a wizard. Oh, oh, oh you, yes, 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 yes. It's a yeah. That's a, that's a, it's a community assessment on uh, on uh, topics that uh, the community is interested in. So uh, that's why we asked the three questions. Oh, so, you're, so about what do I have to fix in my life? <laughs> uh, what's important to you, uh, and then uh, what long term problem must uh, we as a community address like that? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know, one thing is it means being a musician, and especially with COVID, um, it's hard to get people to come out and hear you when you play and playing live is a big part of of, of musician a musician's mm -hmm. life so you know the more the community can um either come out and hear performance or, or or provide opportunities for performance like you know community uh concerts or concerts on the square things like that um uh, or different venues uh, there's some churches and temples and stuff that have concert series which is really cool so anything like that where you you're creating opportunities for music, uh, live music, um, helps the the music community thrive and, and you know keep uh, being able to survive. Mm -hmm. um, when you're playing uh, in front of a live audience, do you feel the vibe of the audience, like the different uh, uh, how one audience differs from another? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes there, there's people are clapping more and some people are, you know, laugh, you know, making noise and clapping along. You can tell, you can tell when people are in, in, interested or where, if, when they're ignoring you, you know. Um, and so, you know, sometimes when we play certain kinds of gigs, um, it's like we're just, we're kind of sub playing for the subconscious mind, you know. People are, are chatting and are, are talking to each other and not really paying attention and really listening intently. But I, I know we're still influencing the, the atmosphere of the room, but ideally you'd like people to really listen to the music and really try to get, get out of it what they can to, to pay, you know, to pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so what problem must we address now as a community? Okay, huh. Uh, well, well, that's uh, tricky. Let's see. Um, 
Well, it kind of might be along the same lines as like, um, you know, well, the, the COVID virus is really um, is, is really causing, um, you know, people to not be to be afraid of being in clo closed areas and all that. So um, it, it really can't ask people to come out if they're not comfortable. Um, but that's kind of what I said before, before is like um, supporting music by showing up. Um, having bodies and ears at, at concerts and um, providing or supporting um, place, uh, you know, venues that would, would give uh, opportunities for performances. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same answer, really. That's okay. That's fine. Because that's what's important to you. As a matter of fact, uh, for the first question about what is more, most important to you, do you think um, you were talking about the having the freedom to uh, perform uh, longer works, and et cetera. But uh, if uh, we were to frame that question as to what's most important to you, like uh, uh, what, what matters to you the most in, uh, in the world, how would you answer that? What matters to me the most in the world? Like, wow. Uh, <laughs> well, I just, I, I'd like people to get along <laughs> mm -hmm. and respect okay. each other. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and uh, you know, the whole thing I did with the global stuff is appreciate di different people's cultures mm -hmm. and different people's worldviews and stuff instead of be afraid of them or, or uh, you know, put them down. So, um, you know, I, I, I think music uh, should try to bring people together and elevate them and, and maybe even teach them and definitely help them enjoy, uh, enjoy themselves, too. Um, I think I probably forgot what the question is now. Um, oh, so what's most important to you? And you answered it actually very, very well because uh, uh, that uh, your answer at embodies uh, what you uh, what you did in Dao Tunes, uh, uh, giving insight about uh, misunderstandings and uh, how people don't get along and uh, how they could get along, and just realizing uh, uh, life as uh, as it as it is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I always think that, you know, the hu human race is one, one race. <laughs> and that's really, that's, you know, and then you go to another planet, you got a different race over in Mars or something. But on Earth, you got the human race, and that's one race, and it's just diverse. But it's one where we have a lot in common. So, you know, that's, uh, that's where we should start. Since, uh, since you mentioned that, uh, your uh, album, Life on Mars, uh, <laughs> what what in your thinking uh, made you uh, title your album Life on Mars? Well, it, that, that's because it, there's a song by David Bowie called Life on Mars, and 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 that was kind of one of the first things that th those those are all covers of of uh, rock tunes and popular tunes like Stevie Wonder and the Beatles, and I and I covered that I, I did an arrangement of the David Bowie tune Life on Mars. And then it's kind of funny when I thought about making an album cover for it, I found out that the NASA photographs are free, that you don't have to pay royalties or, or, or pay money for them. So I said, I, I, and they had just all these photographs of Mars. So I just went and grabbed one and, and they put that on the cover and that became kind of the theme. Mm -hmm. so I, was also, I was also thinking about doing planet flippos, but that might've come afterwards, but the whole planet idea, you know, is, is kind of cosmic. Well, thank you for that. Um, would you like to share with the audience uh, what you're doing now, um, like in uh, your teaching, and then uh, maybe uh, uh, are you working on some album now as well? I'm writing some new tunes. Um, uh, my my the, the man I work with, Dan Hessler, who uh, plays saxophone, came into a rehearsal the other uh, well a couple years ago, and he said. You know, I've been hearing this groove in 11. It goes ducka, 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 you know, in 11, the meter 11, which is crazy. And, and so he wanted to jam on it. So I wrote two tunes in 11. So we have those that we have not learned how to play yet. Um, but we're going to, you know, start rehearsing again, learn to play those tunes. Um, there's uh, some other tunes I've written recently that we could record. And I have a lot of old tunes that we could also record that are from 20 years ago that deserve to be put out there maybe um but no right 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 now i'm actually just trying to teach you know i teach music appreciation and i teach classical piano and jazz piano and fundamentals of music and i'm just trying to keep all that going and private lessons um and 
and I'm trying to manage my band, which is the, my worst talent. I, I, you know, when you manage a band, you get performances for your band and, uh, and you learn where to send the music to get into jazz festivals. And, and I have never been very good at that. So that's my one downfall, you know, that I, uh, I would like to be, get better at that. How often uh, do you and your band practice? Well, we used to practice a couple times a month a while ago, but then COVID hit and we haven't really gotten back into it yet. And we're probably going to try to start doing it again. We haven't done much practicing for a, couple, for a year or a couple of years. Well, um, do you have any, um, uh, do you have, are you mentoring any uh, students uh, since you have so much experience in the field? Yeah, I have some students that, I, that I'm, uh, and, and some, some past students that have, continued in music and it makes me feel good and that they're out there doing it and uh, yeah I have a few here and there. Are they uh, interested in jazz or are they uh, in uh, um, in other music but still have you as a mentor? It's mainly in jazz mm -hmm. yeah. Any uh, final thoughts for our listeners concerning uh, what you're doing and uh, a life as an artist? Oh, it's a it's such a piece piecemeal kind of life. Um, you know, basically having about five jobs and trying to juggle it all, and still have time to do creative work. Uh, you know, make new stuff uh, and manage. Uh, it's a uh, it's rewarding, but it's it's tricky. I, I really appreciate um, what Wizard has been doing. Um, it's it's an amazing how much airplay you've given both of these CDs, um, and it's just it's so nice to to know that. Uh, people keep you know keep have an opportunity to hear it um so that's been really great um it's it's neat to get that there, that these albums are getting heard all over the country uh, one thing you i said about community questions you know it's a tricky thing nowadays but it'd be nice if people would would buy a track or buy a cd you know even if it's online but i, I get all this airplay and i don't think i'm I'm not making any money from it so you know making money from these cds is kind of like almost a joke like you know you make the cds you spend thousands of dollars to make them and then nobody really buys them anymore and that's just the way the music industry has become i guess there's so much free music out there that people don't feel like they have to buy it um but that's another thing that it would be nice for the community to do is to you know to purchase a track or purchase a, a CD in order to help kind of support the musician and let them have uh, funds to make a new CD. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very valid. And uh, do you know how much uh, airplay you need in order to get a royalty check? Have you ever gotten a royalty check? I think I had one in 2012. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think I may have one that may be coming. Are they, uh, I, I think I did something through CD Baby is who, where I sell, sold my CD and I, I gave them permission to collect that for me, which mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if that was wise, but, um, but anyway, uh, but it takes a while for that to gather. They, you know, they, mm -hmm. they issue that every six months or something. So. Oh, like that. It doesn't, it's not that um, it, uh, it reaches a certain amount and then you get it. It's uh, every six months then. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, oh. So I'm going to find out about that. Hopefully I'll, I'll get something for $47 or something. Oh, <laughs> well, we hope that uh, you get much more than that. And then we wish you uh, the best of luck in teaching. And uh, also, um, uh, of course, uh, more music and uh, much success to you. And also with more gigs. Thank you so much. It's been very nice talking with you. Thank you so much. Dave Flippo, jazz artist, vocalist, and pianist. Oh, and composer too. Composer, yes, and yes. That's, that's really my main de definition of myself is I'm a composer. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Yes, we'll uh, we'll change the description on um, <laughs> on our when we publish this interview. We'll make sure that the composer is the is the main uh, description then. Great. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day, day football. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. <laughs>